Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. And today I have the pleasure of interviewing a very good friend and an amazing just woman uh, named Daphna Barel from Israel. Hi Daphna. Hi. Hi Flaka. <laughs> I kind of expected her to answer too. I'm not sure why. <laughs> Um, so I will briefly introduce you and then you can uh, start by telling your story. Daphne okay. is an amazing, amazing uh, makeup artist, hair stylist, pinup extraordinaire. She's the pioneer, I think, of the pinup sort of industry in Israel. You're also a photographer and uh, did I miss anything? Aspiring seamstress. She sews her own clothes and is really incredibly talented in that. So I wanted to bring you here today and talk about your life. <laughs> uh, so why don't you go ahead and start by telling us a little bit about yourself. So I'm just going to tell you a bit about how I got to do all the different things I'm doing. Uh, basically, uh, I grew up in Haifa, which is a town, a city in uh, the north of Israel. And I moved to Tel Aviv when I was uh, about 18 uh, during my military service. Mm -hmm. um, when I was uh, a teenager and growing up, I was super shy and I always loved art and just being an introvert. Although I don't look like an introvert, but I'm an extreme introvert. I just like being home alone, drawing, sewing or doing activi artistic activities by myself. Um, and I always thought I would, I, I would be doing something that is kind of artistic or like something that has to do with style and fashion or, or even drawing, anything like that. And I didn't know exactly how to imagine it even growing up in a city that isn't Tel Aviv or even in Israel in general, it's hard to imagine where to go with uh, artistic ideas uh, of what you want to be. Um, I didn't really know and then I joined the army because it's a mandatory thing here uh, and I had to but it actually turned out to be okay for me and kind of uh, uh, took me on a different path than what I imagined it to be. When I joined the army I did some like pre-army uh, tests and somehow because I was such an introvert and such an internet kid and was all about MySpace and like social media before it was social media. Uh, I actually passed a really um, like high level um, computing test uh, and I got to be in a program that is almost like being a programmer. It was kind of like system maintenance and uh, like just a tiny bit of programming. I didn't think I was that kind of person, like a computer, nerd or analytical person or anything like that but because I have spent uh, so much time online and so much time uh, having like my MySpace page and working on it and designing it and everything and I don't know if people remember it but when you used to design your MySpace page you actually used HTML you just didn't know that's what you're doing but you actually coded your page if you wanted it to be certain colors or add images to it. I didn't realize it until recently that that's the reason I passed the programming test because I already did it on MySpace. <laughs> that's so crazy. I did three years, although most uh, uh, women do two years. Uh, but because of that, I got to move to Tel Aviv really early when I was like uh, 20 or even 19 even, uh, which is like my favorite city. Uh, in Israel and I don't think I would have been able to move that fast mm -hmm. uh, if I didn't do that and also it gave me some time to take some courses during my service I took um, um, photography courses mm -hmm. I did some uh, photography courses and studio lighting courses and like a lot of like small courses that add up to a lot of knowledge in photography um, and then when I left the army so i decided after all uh, to go that route and continue working in high tech and then i did for like two years in that time i took more courses that time i i aimed more for makeup courses and studied a few different uh, professional makeup courses and uh, 
theater makeup and everything I could take, any course I could take. And even uh, instruction, like mm -hmm. yeah, makeup instructor. I really loved doing that as well. And all the time when I was working there, I didn't like the work, but it did give me like tons of time to do other things. And I did photo shoots and I did, uh, I like uh, performed burlesque and produced uh, events and parties in that field in rockabilly and in burlesque. Uh, so one day I just quit. I don't know, it's like a whole, <laughs> a whole day. thing. One day after it's been on my mind for a long time. Um, and I really didn't have a plan. Like I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, and then by accident in the, in the month leading up to actually leaving the company that I worked for, uh, I got an offer from uh, Irin Shachaf Beauty School. That's what helped me like pave the way to concentrating more on makeup and also just being able to be a freelancer because it's really hard in the beginning and having that even part-time job it like gave me a lot of security and just feeling good about my skills and what what I chose to do I like left the military when I was about 20 and then for two years I worked in high tech so I was really extremely young I was 22 or 23 mm -hmm. until you know what with all the, until I got a job and everything, I guess I was 23 when I left. And I already like had a car and my own apartment and was like feeling really good because I had a high paying salary. But then I just like didn't know where I'm gonna get a paycheck. And I did have that like small part-time job as an instructor, uh, but I was like 24 seven questioning myself about my choice of being a freelancer and like if I, if I can make a living, like I just didn't have any even role model to look up to because, you know, the makeup artists here, like they don't do what I do. And they did a lot of bridal work that at the time wasn't like something I was interested in. Like I had no idea how I'm gonna be okay. <laughs> so I just kept for like two years, I just kept sending out resumes for like the high tech positions while I was a freelancer every time I got I got a call from the bank or something like telling me like you're in trouble or something I would like immediately send out resumes because <laughs> I was so freaked out and I just you know it takes about two years to actually be kind of stable as a freelancer and I didn't really know that even so I was just freaked out that I didn't have money so I just kept going to, to job interviews and just like sitting there and not showing any like emotion about wanting to be there or not convincing them that I want to be there. And they were questioning me like, like, are you, do you want to be here? Like that's something I did for two years until I finally just cleaned this idea out of my head. Like, cause I knew I didn't want to do it, but to, to go back to high tech, but I was so like insecure about not making money. And also because my parents are both doctors and <laughs> that's another the whole thing. Podcast. Yeah, but, but once my mom was like, stop wasting your time and going to job interviews you don't wanna be at, I was like liberated from that feeling that's like for them I needed to work in high tech. And that was pretty much the end of it. Okay. So ever since you quit from your high-tech job, that was six, seven years. How long have you been running your business? Um, I guess like eight or maybe closing up to nine years now. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot, Daphna. Yeah, actually. I don't stop to think about it too often, but yeah. I know. I know. So you told us a lot of things that are super interesting. There is a lot to unpack here. <laughs> I'm kind of thinking, where do we start? Um, I would like to share that what you described when you left your high-tech job and decided to be a makeup freelance um, business owner is very similar to the process that I went through when I decided to quit my hospital job and start my own business of teaching twerk as a means to empower women. And so I know that for me, it was three months 
from the time that I realized that I was unhappy in my life until I realized that I want to quit and start my own business in dance. And in the middle, it was just three months of crying, just crying and feeling like I'm disappointing my my Ashkenazi Jewish family for going to do something that is not considered proper or appropriate or even making use of my education and my diplomas. Um, and I think, I think that's a really important thing to communicate to other people because people see you and me as strong, independent women who run their own business and who go against the grain and they do what they want. And it's true, but it's not because we don't have any fears or it's not because we are fearless and we don't care what others think, especially the ones who are close to us. So I was just wondering if you can share what was that process like for you? What kind of emotions you had? For me, at no point did I think this is something I want to do for the rest of my life. This is something I completely stumbled into. I, I, I'm talking about the high-tech job and the computer, computing uh, side of it. And I just knew from the start, I hate it, <laughs> basically. <laughs> like there are like points of joy that I found, but the whole thing it's like it's not me and now retro retrospectively of course i know i got a lot of knowledge out of it and a lot of things i can do now come from that and a lot of the confidence i have now are from just knowing i'm capable of doing different things that i don't expect m myself to do but i never thought this is something i'm gonna do for more than a few years and the point for me was like when do i have enough forage or enough money that's what I thought at the time enough money that saved up and I didn't save any money while doing it but I was thinking like I should save money and then I can you know be free and do whatever I want and study abroad and study fashion and like not care about anything but because I was so unhappy I just spent all the money all the time I would just like buy online and so there was no like breaking point uh, the actual like courage point when I said like okay I'm living now today like actually telling my superior that I'm living is actually because I really like the people I was working with and my superior it was super nice and because I was I was you know I'm a good worker you know <laughs> so I was good and I I kind of faked I guess enthusiastic uh, about different stuff so it just gave me a huge project to program, like that kind of means like getting a promotion at some point and like something that was supposed to last a few months and it just felt so like horrible, like I'm like I'm keeping a secret from him or something that I don't want to be there. And I just I just told him like I don't think I want to be here like that long, and I don't know when I don't know what I'm gonna do, but like don't give me this project because I'm not gonna be here. And he took it as a um, as me saying I'm quitting <laughs> which is great but like I, it's not something I really thought out I just told him like I will be quitting <laughs> at some point <laughs> but he was like okay so I guess we're quitting yeah like it doesn't make sense to keep someone and <laughs> it's like telling your boyfriend listen I'm having fun right now but yeah, exactly. we're gonna break up at one point or another because this is not this is not what I actually want um, it happened to me. That's a great way to, to, to understand it because like till now I'm like, I don't think I actually quit, but yeah, telling someone like, I'm going to be quitting. So, you know, yes. uh, and when he understood it this way, I didn't like correct him because I was like, okay, like I just need to live. Like it felt like a weight went off my chest, you know, um, so I just quit. But there wasn't like a moment that I woke up and was like, today I'm going to be you know start being a freelancer i was like no idea what i'm doing i just don't want to do this <laughs> i think it's really important um to reflect to a certain point of course because we are businesses but to reflect that it's not a 100 percent certainty yeah. of and conviction that yes, I can do this. It's not, at least not for us. You know, I always say I have a couple of friends that were born with the ability to just go for it and not care what other things, what others think. And for me, I definitely had to learn it. 
and mm -hmm. to push myself forward despite those, you know, negative voices or the inner saboteur or my parents uh, or my perception of my parents. Um, so thank you for sharing that. We just discussed that there's a misconce misconception sometimes that uh, you have to be very certain in your path and only then you can take your path. But sometimes it takes a leap of faith, even though you don't feel 100% ready, you're going to say, fuck it and uh and go for it so apart from feeling that way eight nine years ago when you started your business what other sort of big um turning points in your professional career did you feel something similar to that i think as a professional and in general as someone who wants to take control of their lives and make sure they're you know, happy with what they're doing at any point. It's something that I always ask myself, like, like even on a monthly basis, like all the time, I'm like, do I like how my week looks? Do I like how my day looks? Uh, what makes me happy? What doesn't? Um, I don't wanna, because two years, I woke up every day feeling like I don't wanna wake up. I don't wanna drive to this, the same place. I don't wanna, uh, enter the same building like all this feeling that I kind of took for, for granted I think a lot of people take it for granted feeling this way and uh, I was okay with it because again I felt like it was my choice and I'm making money and everything like this is not something I ever want to feel again and uh, I actually have to say the same Elon and uh, my husband is kind of the same but even more extreme because he was in the military as um, like operational and he woke up every day like looking at a tent you know and saying like i can't believe this is real life you know so i really really <laughs> this is like the extreme example but i i kind of feel the same about the military about the two years working in high tech i was like like i don't want to do this like i'm waking up and i'm fighting myself to do everything that i'm doing and because i know like the extreme feeling that way I want to wake up it's not every day but I want to wake up feeling like excited for today mm -hmm. and you can't have it every day but I'm not doing anything that I like suffer doing or suffer waking up knowing I'm gonna be doing of course you know you have to do certain things like taxes or whatever it doesn't it's not even a big deal for me because I love like how my days look as a whole but every time I find something I don't want to do, like you stop doing uh, productions, you know, like coming on set and doing makeup. I don't like it. I don't like like being uh, in other people's like, schedule, you know, that they're telling me now do this, now do that. I don't like it. I like to decide my own schedule, for example. So I just don't do anything I don't like, you know, that's where it got me. One thing that you and I have in common is our love for RuPaul's Drag Race. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I feel like this TV show, for anybody who watches it, is so much more than just a reality race to the next drag superstar. I think that in the show we get to see the common humanities between everybody. I think that they share the vulnerable pieces of their heart and that makes us love them and at the end of the day there's always that peace at least for me that that there is that piece of yourself that those parts of yourself that you always felt you had to hide in order to be accepted in your immediate surrounding or at least where you grew up and i think that when i watch rupaul's drag race and hear their story about that piece that that, that they had to hide the feelings are the same feelings even if it's not the same thing and so i was wondering what is your connection to drag culture what do you love about it what do you what do you think people who are not for, from the lgbtq community um, can relate to and maybe how can we become better allies for them and i definitely rel relate and i don't even like know why i relate so much to, to this community and not in it's something yeah, you know i always connected to uh drug specifically is something i connect to because i feel like a drug queen you know i feel like i from from being a teenager from that point on i realized like 
I can choose how I look, you know, in an extreme way, not like a what shirt, t-shirt I'm wearing. I can choose like who I want to be, you know, have an image and be that image. And that's something that is extremely powerful as being like a shy person. And I was, you know, I was the tall girl. I was the overweight girl. Uh, I was always like trying, you know, to, to shorten myself to small, like make myself smaller. And then I realized like, I can, you know, I can control what I look. And I always loved alternative music, alternative scenes and everything. So it started that way. It started from, you know, wearing like goth clothes and um, getting like a lot of piercings. You know, when you're a teenager, it's really like, that's the first step of saying like, like, I'm not part of you, you know, this is my own thing. Just having that control, you know, and like putting an armor on just, because you're I think that sensitive like introvert or I think a lot of the of the girls on RuPaul are like that like they were the outsider and then they're saying like you know I this is who I want to be when I go out to the world or this is my shield and they might be even really different than what they are out of drag because of it and that's something I relate to extremely and just, you know, all the transformation of being like bullied to being like the, you know, like in charge of the party kind of uh, personas. That's beautiful. When we talked uh, in the past and in, in different uh, conversations, you often mentioned that you love drag because it, it is a shield. It is a face that you can put on and then present it to the world and feel more confident in many ways. And I would like to kind of relate that to the highlight reel of Instagram. When we have a beautiful shield, like drag or like your makeup or, I don't know, my makeup when I, and me dancing, it's, it's easy to present that to the world because we're confident in that shield. That shield is it's our shield, you know? And sometimes it can come at expense of showing the more vulnerable sides. My God, I feel like RuPaul right now. So <laughs> I just, I know you have a lot to say about this, uh, about this topic, about the highlight reel of Instagram and social media. And just yesterday you mentioned that people think all you do is wear nice clothes, put makeup on and be pink all day, every day. And in reality, you're just on the computer <laughs> yeah. five hours a day, right? Sewing, like, <laughs> like not even looking up to it on yet. Definitely, like you know, I won't put, I, I won't put up something that you know I had just now. Now I had like a whole week of sewing, and I didn't even like I had the worst eyebrows I had in a while, and like everything I didn't wash my hair for too long, and everything like I want, you know take a picture like it's not something that's gonna happen maybe someday I will be evolved enough to do it just to make people feel good or something and show them reality Instagram isn't reality but it's just not what you show you show oh I made a corset it's beautiful my hair is done I'm wearing it now but you don't show like me like with a hammer like putting the <laughs> the eyelets in or anything but yeah, my, my life personally as well, I live like in the south of Tel Aviv in a really like hardcore area. I definitely don't, you know, um, it's not all pink, like the inside of my house is, but when I go in the street or anything, I, I, I feel like my shield is like the opposite, like my, my pink hair and my tattoos attract like attention that I don't want. It becomes like the opposite of a shield actually, it makes me more vulnerable to you know to people to men thinking like I'm soft or they can say whatever or or the opposite because of my tattoos they're allowed to say what they think or you know it's there's not really a thing that is an actual shield sometimes it you know it results in the opposite way but what I do think about myself personally is because I was as I told you like an internet child you know I grew up on the internet like that's I'm actually more, even I'm, even though I'm a millennial, like my mindset is a bit of like the generation after us. Like I grew up like, like creating an image online and in real life, I was like super, you know, closed and 
like didn't want to connect with people in my school or anything but i had like another alternative life you know online or even just out of school like i had other friends and everything and um, so for me it's something that is like part of me is just like having an online persona and a real persona as i grow up i i, I stopped doing it you know i'm I not stopped but like i'm trying to not be yeah to more connect it and again as your friend and as your colleague i think that over the last year or years or few months um just generally in life with covid there's less boundaries people are more at home and so for example in my school i my marketing prof professor is teaching from his bedroom which is by the way beautiful but it also feels mm -hmm. incredibly intimate and so like my question for you is do you feel like in the last year are you trying to make more of an effort to accurately reflect in your instagram the less glamorous parts of life uh, it's not about the less glamorous it's more about like not having that wall i think i more i made a mistake a lot of people who think like being successful on instagram means of like just being a persona you know I'm doing a photo shoot, I upload a picture of the photo shoot, just being like very one-sided, like not, it's not even providing content, you're just like showing your best self, showing your best self, like nothing behind it. And I made an effort in the last year to think like, like how can I make someone's day nicer when they're following me? Like uh, show them a picture that makes them happy or a picture that, or a video tutorial or something that gives them, you know, uh, something they can interact with you know doing a tutorial it means you can do it like something more like thinking of instagram more as a community and not like just a platform to show my best life i'm thinking what i like i don't like seeing uh, someone's perfect butt you know i like to see like underwear on someone who has a butt that looks in real life like mine that has cell light or you know pimples <laughs> sorry to take this uh, to this area but you know, it doesn't seem a perfect butt doesn't make me feel good, no. you know, uh, seeing a perfect body, seeing a, a perfect uh, skin without makeup, like, it doesn't make me feel good. Like, that's not what I want to see. I like seeing a pink kitchen or someone's, uh, you know, a <laughs> nice hair or like something that makes you feel good. And that's something like I had to think, like, not just what makes me feel good to present, but what would make people feel good as well i guess i'm not i'm not saying I'm, I'm i'm doing it perfectly but this understanding just makes my content a bit different i think yeah i get that i definitely get that and i also wanted to say that my background is pink um in uh, in respect to you it's a special day <laughs> although it looks less pink than yours in real life <laughs> it's <is> pink Maybe. <laughs> Um, and I definitely get what you're saying. It's not about just uh, showing, look, I look pretty, or this is it, and look what I did. It's about, it's about giving content and trying to give something back to the people who follow you because their time is precious. Yeah. So I definitely get that. And you're good at it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I am always trying to find the line between thinking about my followers and also my own cool. mental health. Because some days you just can't be bothered to upload a single story. Um, the last few weeks have been challenging for me as well with school and trying to balance um, my business and my new school. So it really is trying to, it's not even a line. There are so many factors in social media. So trying to keep yourself healthy and balanced and also provide value for your followers is it faka or faka is it faka or faka 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 die this is going into the <laughs> interview since i have a pretty big following uh, in countries that are not israel uh so people cannot come and have their face done up by you how can people find you on the wide web uh youtube and instagram do you have free tutorials and what kind of content or what kind of services can they buy from you? So I have my Instagram profile where I have a lot of Instagram TV videos. I have my YouTube channel and I'm just going to send you all the links so you can put up 
uh, under this video. And I started my beauty school. First course I'm launching on October 18th, my birthday, uh, is about vintage waves, which is basically actually this, just my hair is super long right now, but uh, it's about pin curling without using a curling iron and brushing it out into like a vintage wave style. Before we close off, is there anything else you'd like to add for our amazing view viewers? Uh, I wanted to thank you um, for helping me. Uh, just during this whole period, we've been talking a lot and everything, but just yesterday you really like blew my mind when we did that Zoom meeting and uh, you gave me tons of advice about like my next steps because this is so overwhelming when launching just a new product. And this is the first time I'm launching anything online. And I just have, I'm just watching too many videos and too much, too many podcasts and I have too much information. And you just really helped me like organize all my next steps and everything I wanna do. And it just made me think about like the difference. I think because of our like age, it sounds like we're old, but we're the same age, like 31, 32, right? <laughs> yeah. So I think because of our age, uh, this is something that it took me a while to get to, but um, I think it, it takes a while to get to the point where you feel like when you help other women succeed and help colleagues and advice and make connections with other women, it actually helps you, it helps them them succeeding is something that helps you and it's something that it's not it's not how we grow up we grow up as women thinking like our the slots for women are like you know uh, limited mm -hmm. like because you see it you see it in government you see it in the uh, in ceos you see the number of women in like uh, positions of powers are always uh, smaller than other in any industry even in the makeup industry i think that the biggest names, at least in Israel, are male. So you always feel like like women have to uh, fight, you know, to to get the slot. Even in the makeup industry, in the hairstyling industry, uh, which I guess are I don't know the numbers and statistics, but I guess like most professionals are women, and still the the biggest names, at least in Israel, will be male. Um, so it's just something that you don't even have you know, to, to be brought up that way. You just see it, you can't help it. And then you think it makes you feel like you need to fight for slots or someone's success is instead of your success and it doesn't work like this. Like you really have to work on yourself to always think like someone's success means I can have more success, you know? They're opening doors or they're um, creating the market or just inspiring me, you know? When I surround myself with successful women, I can be a successful woman because you are, you know, what's around you. And um, just changing that mindset of like seeing colleagues and seeing just other women um, as something that we can, you know, mentor each other and help each other and uh, inspire and support and everything. It's, it sounds basic, but it's not, you know? It's, it's something that, um, it's a mindset that that is really something that I feel in the last year I adapted and it helps me. It helped me so much. And not, like one big uh, one big example of that is you helping me yesterday, and I know I'm gonna help you in anything else. And you know it. It's not even something that we need to to say. You know, uh, just that feeling that you can you know ask somebody for advice and get advice and the opposite uh, it's really amazing really it's, it's again it sounds so basic but for me i'm such a lone wolf in that way i always like feel like i need to protect my thing and not say what i'm planning what i'm working on just like being my own thing and it's so amazing to not feel that way you know to feel like i i want to open up to to other women and i want to help them and i want them to help me it's pretty priceless and thank you. <laughs> I'm so excited that my fingers don't make the heart. Um, thank you. Thank you, Daphna. I obviously feel the same way. And I think it's so, so important. I remember when I first started pole dancing, there was one, one singular pole dance instructor in Israel, Mo, Mo Montola. And she was the first one to say, the more you support others, the more you can grow. And 
I also experienced the lone wolf syndrome and it has been constant work to open up, to support. Um, and I think that, I don't know if there was necessarily a switch for me, but I do know this is something that I'm putting my, my, my energy into in the last years. And I definitely, I definitely get so much out of having a support network full of strong, successful women and full of compassionate and vulnerable and open and sometimes scared women as well because we're all of that and the more we present a well-rounded and complex personality the more people understand men women and other genders that we should be good to each other that's it thank you so much Daphna I feel like this was an amazing talk me too thank you <laughs> And um, if you want to follow Daphna, I will have all of her everything listed below. You can also just Google search or search in any of the platforms, Daphna Bar L, just as you hear it. Leave your comments. I would love to know what you guys thought. <laughs> Bye. Thank you.